it's a series of new currencies that are defined by digital assets that can be in part present in what we call metaverse or simply gamify our own lives. That's yeah, right. and which roles will play individually, right, in this new universe? Because to me, NFTs, it's either you're an artist or you're a buyer or you're yes. a collector or you're just an observer. Maybe you're none of the above, right? So how this role will be changing, you think, for it? <laughs> so we built uh, the concept and a company called Patronage NFT. So for us, the most important thing is what you do with the money or what you do with your assets in terms of influence. So what we usually do, we collaborate with institutions and we ask what are the patronage um, initiatives, what they need the funding for. So for example, the Florence Cathedral Museum has initiatives in restoration, maintenance, or ongoing education programs. And possibly as a fourth layer is the creation and the growth of the endowment of the institution. OK, so once we assign the purpose of the money, then we scout and we define what are the assets that are ideal to support that mission. OK, so um, there is many different ways uh, to to define what an NFT can be. But uh, there is also other ways to define what you do with the financial rewards of the NFT or the 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 let's say, the digital asset value of this NFT, because you might never even monetize that and use it as a barter tool or a licensing tool. So the goal for us is first to uh, identify the patronage purpose, the second to identify the assets, and the third, build a strategy to go to market, not for sale or for sale uh, or for licensing, and they use the, the revenues, if any, because some institutions could opt to hold the assets without selling it for a certain time period. And then once you monetize them, use the money for the purpose in which that NFT was intended. And that's why we call it the patronage NFT. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, going back to your unique experience in Afghanistan, because you were ahead of the time for sure, right, yes. in early 2000s. I would really love to know um, how people can jump on that wagon in a way that um, celebrities can monetize their tweets now, right? But they're celebrities. They're part of, you know, more traditional media anyways, right? And this way they, they don't need this big breakout. What about right smaller entrepreneurs? What about people who don't have this huge following anyways, right? What's they what's their way to reach to, you know, what's possible? Because again, it sounds like you have to start somewhere. Yes. Um, the the difficulty basically it's just like any fundraising or crowdsourcing initiative. You need to build a community of people that understand the value of the asset and you have to build a, a currency or a, a type of asset that speaks to them okay so if we're doing an initiative of funding for people in the arts we have uh, to focus on the type of content that uh, will be appreciated by that community right so a classical image of um, a monument like the one behind me might not work for everybody so there are people that will appreciate uh, um, a picture of uh, Piazza del Duomo in Florence as it is. Other people will want to have the 3D version rendering uh, of, of this in institution, right? Others will appreciate a complete reinterpretation, right? So we were, for example, thinking about uh, uh, creating uh, new facades of the Duomo on a digital version so that uh, contemporary artists or architects could contribute with something completely crazy, maybe landing pads for drones on the terraces of the Duomo that are right here, you know, right here, for example. So there are different ways to, uh, to engage with the community. Not all work, right? So there could be that the people that are more in love with the institution are less prone to invest in NFTs and they prefer to stay on the side of donating money. 
But the, basically, the NFT space is almost like a space where in the patronage industries, you transform a donor into an investor. But you can also go through the other way to, to take a, an investor and explain them the values of the patronage and transform an investor into a passionate donor who could have some upsides on the second, secondary market down the road, all right? Um, the Florence Cathedral Museum is a 725 years institution. And uh, its mission has been from day one, the maintenance and, uh, uh, and the upkeep of the Cathedral of Florence. So for us, as uh, partners, and also I have a role in within this institution, is a normal thing to think we have to think about the next 700 years. And NFTs are a form of uh, eternal uh, uh, source of income, basically, because every time you take an NFT and you sell it on the secondary market, you can actually program that NFT to bring back a piece of the value to the institution that issued the NFTs. So you could issue an NFT today and 100, 200, 300 years from now, if this NFT continues to trade into the secondary market, continues to bring financial sustainability to the institution that issued that, well beyond the time in which we will be alive. So that's also another aspect in which I find extremely important is this uh, patronage that goes in, you know, basically, continues in history.